Hello beautiful souls, Naomi Fox Reina here, Lightfield Astrologer and Human Design Expert. And today I want to do a Q&A. So if you're on live, do hashtag live. If you're catching the replay, do hashtag replay. But if you're here live, you can go ahead and ask your questions and I will answer them for you. Um, but I want to talk about the idea of the frustrated generator uh, because the generator and the manifesting generator, as we know, that's the, those are the type that have the defined sacrals. Their not self theme is frustration. So the way that you can know is your telltale sign that you're not living in alignment with yourself is you will feel the very distinct energy of being frustrated. So let's unpack that. Let's look at a few things. I see there's some people getting on. So go ahead and jump on on and do hashtag live if you're here live and hashtag replay if you're catching the replay. So, um, and then go ahead and type any questions that you have and I will get to them as we go. But let's start talking about the generator and the manifesting generator. So we are going to break them down because they are distinctively different, but technically they have the same aura type because their aura is coming from that distinctive defined sacral. So the way that their motor um, shows up in their aura is it creates this big, enveloping, warm, fantastic energy. Now, just because you have an aura that's that way, that does not mean that it correlates with your personality. You could have a not super warm, enveloping personality or not feel like you want people in your space and still be a generator. Um, just like a manifester can have a very repelling aura, but that does not mean that their personality is repelling. It's a, it's a way that the aura connects with and communicates and kind of announces you to the rest of the world. So that generator motor creates this powerhouse within you and people around you are going to respond to it. They're going to feel it. They're going to have their own reaction to it as they encounter you. And so 70% of the planet is either a generator or a manifesting generator. It's divided about half and half with slightly more generators than manifesting generators. So 70% of the planet, seven out of 10 people have this incredible powerhouse drive within them that is just magnificent. And as somebody who has an undefined sacral, I have a tiny bit of jealousy <laughs> because um, I love that energy. And it's like, it's so incredible to me. And one of the most satisfying things to me as a projector is helping generators and manifesting generators to be super aligned so that they're doing the glorious, amazing, fun, incredible things that they're meant to do on the planet. So um, the way that you know you're not living true to yourself as a generator or manifesting generator is you will feel the very specific energy signature of frustration. And the way that you will know that you're living true to yourself is you will have the very specific energy signature of satisfaction. So the way that you achieve satisfaction day after day after day is you follow your strategy and authority. So your strategy in human design is one of the very best things that exists in human design. It is like the bread and butter of like what we get from this incredible system. Because if you don't know what to do next or how to experience things or what's right for you, you look at your strategy. So the strategy of the generator as well as the manifesting generator is to wait to respond. Now I know a lot of you guys have been seeing that and that kicked off a lot of questions recently of like what does this mean to wait to respond? So let's break it down. So Waiting to respond is amazing and glorious and also basically one of the hardest things ever for the generator motor to do. If you notice, all of the um, strategies for each of the different aura types is pretty much the hardest thing for them to do. It goes completely against what we impulsively want to do. And um, yet, if we don't adhere to it, we find that we keep creating scenarios for ourselves that are totally out of alignment. So to wait to respond means that you wait for something external to you to come into your space to give you something to respond to. Now that could be you're driving down the road and you see a billboard or you overhear a conversation or somebody comes right up to your face and talks to you. Um, it could be you see a plastic bag like floating through the air and that makes you think of something. It's a sign or a signal or something, but it's something external to you 
and it stimulates your powerful sacral motor to give you an answer. It responds and it responds with a uh-huh or a uh-uh. And there are two types of authority. So we have the strategy is to respond and the authority for generators and manifesting generators is either going to be a sacral authority or an emotional authority. The sacral authority, if they have the, the emotional center undefined, is going to very clearly be a uh-huh or a uh-uh, and it will come quickly. They will just have it. And then the emotional authority, you'll get the uh-huh or uh-uh, but you still need to wait for the emotional wave to come and go, go up and down and up and down and up and down and sleep on it, take some time. It might take you a few hours. It might take you a few days, weeks, months, years to make a decision um, and to know what's right for you. <laughs> um, all the emotional authorities on the planet get to wait. You get like a double waiting as a generator that's an emotional authority. Um, so the non-emotional or the sacral authority generators and manifesting generators will get a clear uh-huh or uh-uh. They'll just say, be like, do you want to go get Chipotle for lunch? Uh-huh. Or do you want to go get a salad for lunch? Uh-uh. Like, you'll just know. It'll be this uh-huh or uh-uh that you will come through. If you are a generator or a manifesting generator and you have been taught, maybe harshly, to say yes or no, you might be cut off from really listening to your sacral authority because you're li listening not for a yes or a no. You're listening for the distinctive uh-huh or uh-uh. And so with that, you'll still get the uh-huh, uh-uh with the emotional authority, but you have to ride the emotional wave. Like the initial response could be like, oh my gosh, that sounds amazing. Yes, I would love to do that. Don't say yes when you're in your emotional high and don't say no or yes when you're in emotional low. Don't answer when you're still riding that wave. When you're so, so excited, don't commit or don't turn it away. And when you're feeling kind of scared and icky and, you know, fearful and anxious, um, don't say no or yes from there either because neither is going to be clear. You have to wait for the up and down and up and down and up and down and allow yourself to fully feel it. And then after the emotional up and down has come and gone, then you'll get the clarity and then you can respond. So sounds a little bit complicated, but if you master this, this will give you everything that you desire, everything. This is how the universe is trying to like perfectly deliver your exact ideal life to you. And if you have been doing anything outside of your strategy and authority, I can guarantee you that that is why you are so unhappy and specifically frustrated. So frustration for an emotional or for a, a generator or a manifesting generator happens because you have this powerful sacral motor that's just like purring and like just wants to go and there's not something to respond to or you've responded incorrectly to something and so you get frustrated like you're driving down the road and the person in front of you isn't moving fast enough raw and like you get frustrated and um, you just want to push things through. You just want to make it happen. You just want to get it done. And it's frustration. And um, it's, it is amazing the power of I want to go. I want to do. I want to create. I want to exert myself into the world, but I can't. And so that happens most often when we're trying to live as a manifester and be like, I'm going to go inform the world about what I'm doing and then I'm going to do it. That is wonderful for a manifester. That's only 8% of the population. Most coaching programs or manifestation things are designed for manifestors or to be true to the manifestor aura type, to say, decide what you want and go after it and don't take no for an answer, right? We're learning that that old way is falling away, especially as we have systems like human design to shed a light that not everybody does it the same way. Who knew? And so when you're following that correctness, you get to decide, you still have control over your life. You get to be like, what would I like? Hmm, I think I would like a vacation. Like, I think that sounds really good fun. And then you're walking down the road and you overhear somebody being like, oh my gosh, I want to go to the Bahamas. Like, I think that sounds incredible. And your sacral is like, uh-huh. Like, they're not even talking to you, but you have this external thing going on. And then you're driving down the road and you see a billboard with like, palm trees and like the hammock all stretched out. And if you're a generator and you've done a session with me, there's a really good chance you've heard me use this example. Um, and like you see the beach scene and your sacral motor is like, uh-huh. <laughs> and then you come home and your partner is like, 
hey, I've really been thinking I would like to go just be where it's sunny and there's a beach and all the things. And it's like, uh-huh. And um, and then you get like an email that says 40% off tickets to, you know, the Caribbean book now. And you're like, yes. And so you check in with your authority to see if this really is correct for you. But you have a repeated succession of external things that are like serving this up where if you were like, I'd like to go on vacation. And then you get on and you start searching for flights right in that moment and it does not working and there's technical issues and the site keeps going down and the coupon code that you're using isn't working and then every time you type in your email address it just doesn't come out right which is weird because it should auto populate but it's not um you get frustrated and it's not working and like you're trying to shove it through but you're trying to book a trip to cabo when really you need to be in um i don't know tahiti <laughs> right and so like um, cause the most aligned thing is not necessarily what you would come up with, but you trust and you let the universe bring you the most magnificent, delicious, incredible things perfectly constructed for you. Like the details are taken care of. All you have to do is wait to respond and then check in with your authority to see if you're responding correctly and just do that over and over and over again. It's like magic. Like, oh, it's amazing. Um, because if you're living true to yourself, you literally have an endless stream of satisfying experiences. I'm going to say that again. <laughs> you have an endless stream of satisfying experiences. Part of this involves physically exerting yourself and physically using up your energy every single day, whatever that looks like for you. I recognize that there's like physical limitations and things like that. Um, I get it. However, <laughs> A generator and a manifesting generator absolutely must, must, must use up their physical energy. They need to exhaust themselves every single day so that their generator motor can recharge from sleep. You recharge from sleep. People with an undefined sacral recharge from alone time, but generators recharge from sleep. Really important distinction because if you are the generator or manifesting generator, there's a good chance that you have non-sacral people in your life. And it's super important for you to be aware that they do not recharge from sleep. Sleep helps them to function and not be crazy, but they need alone time because they have to empty out that sacral that's been collecting all of that sacral energy that isn't true to them. It's like if you're plugged in all the time, but you're only meant to receive this much energy and you're receiving, you know, this much, you can't see my hands, but like <laughs> that is not good. That's not good for the non-sacral being. But the generator, if you are not getting enough exercise, if you're not having enough joyful movement in your day, something that just doesn't feel like exercise unless you enjoy that, but something that moves you and something that causes you to break a sweat, you won't sleep well, you'll be extra frustrated, you'll never fully replenish. And so to whatever is your physical ability, exert yourself every single day. I have a wonderful manifesting generator that is my middle child and he is almost 12 and he struggles to fall asleep at night. He's my only Manny Gen of my children and then I have a step stepdaughter who's also a manifesting generator. So I have two manifesting generators between my six children, of my children and my stepchildren. And he really struggles to fall asleep at night. His mind is super active. He has an Aquarius moon and a stellium in Aquarius. So he's always thinking and we've talked about it many times that it's like, sweetie, you got to find something to do to exert yourself every day. I'm a projector, so I'm not going to be that mom that's going to like run alongside you at the park. <laughs> and I'm sorry for that. As a projector mom, like it's just a little bit rough. Projector moms, motherhood requires consistent access to your physical energy and they just don't have that. So, um, so we've talked about this. So last night he was like, I would really like a treadmill. And so we're looking at treadmills and we're figuring out like where would it fit and all the things. So he says he would love to run on the treadmill. And I believe him that he would actually probably run on the treadmill really hard every single day. And he absolutely needs this. Like he's been known to like just run up and down the stairs like repeatedly or do jumping jacks or things like that. But he, especially with his testosterone levels rising and everything going through the great transitions of life, he is um, needing to exert even more of that physical energy than he ever has before. And so being able to know that as his mother is really helpful. So the difference between a generator and a manifesting generator is in some ways slight, in other ways huge. So the generator is here to respond to something external and then act on that and go, go, go. 
the manifesting generator is a bit of a hybrid. So they have the wait to respond part, but because they have a motor to the throat, which is what makes them a manifesting generator. So they have one of the four motors in human design has a channel that goes up to the throat center. They are um, they're, they're, and with a defined sacral, they have to wait to respond. And then after they have waited to respond and they find something to respond to and they figure out what's correct for them, then they get to inform with their voice, with their fabulous defined throat center, they get to inform the people that will be impacted by the decisions that are about to happen. And then they get to go do. So they kind of have this twofold where they do wait to respond, but then they can thrust forward really fast. So they move very quickly. They're extremely diverse and they will jump from one thing to the next to the next, which is beautiful and wonderful. And from the outside, it could look like flaky or you can't finish anything or why can't you just just focus on one thing. Focusing on one thing is the worst thing ever for a Manny Gen. You're meant to focus on like three different things at a time or in a day. Um, and so if you're running a business and your business has like three different arms to it, um, that are all distinctively different, that's totally fine. If that works for you and if that feels good to you, do it. You don't have to put yourself in a box. In fact, that's like a disservice to yourself, which is huge enough, but it's also a disservice to the world. We need you to be your diverse, interesting self and to just pursue all of your passions everything. You get to do it all. Um, in a lot of ways, manifesting generators are extremely independent because they don't need anyone else. As a projector, I need sacral motors in my life and I need somebody to connect me to my throat because my throat is undefined. And so I can't manifest through speaking without collaboration. So I have to work with other people where and a generator doesn't have that motor to the throat. And so they also need to have other people to collaborate with to get things up and out. Um, and manifestors, they just go, they initiate, they start the bullet train off and all of that. Manifesting generators, they not only are running the bullet train after they've responded correctly, but they're also able to like push the whole dang thing. <laughs> Um, but, 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 um, do not let yourself get caught into the trap of becoming a slave. Just because you have magnificent energy doesn't mean you have to carry everything. Just because you're here to work, which I know a lot of generators are like, that sucks. Um, but just because you have the ability to work does not mean you're only here to do drudge work. In fact, we need you to do the things and only the things that truly light you up. Because when something is a yes for you, when something is a uh-huh, it will feel like a full body yes. Like your whole body will light up. And what's shocking to a lot of generators is non-sacral people don't feel that way, generally. Um, I mean, I haven't spoken to all of them, but if they do, there's a good chance that they're pretending like they're a generator, which is a terrible disaster. And most non-sacrals do it for a while. But you'll get this full body yes. Some people describe it like a heck yes or a F yes or, you know, like lots and lots of like needing expletives just to get the point across because it is so intensely powerful when your sacral motor says yes or you'll get like a heck no or a strong expletives no um, when it is a no and it'll be like, uh-uh, I want nothing to do with that. And if you get a uh-uh, do not, do not, do not do that thing. Please do not do that thing. It will go so bad because your generator motor will like thrust you into the ground. Like that powerful motor, if you're out of alignment, you, you'll you burn out. You can still burn out even with all that magnificent energy. Now, your burnout might look like a few weeks or a few months if it's pretty bad. Um, a generator or a manifester or a reflector's burnout could last for years. So it's very, very, very catastrophic when a non-sacral being gets out of alignment. But um, the generator being in alignment, like when you're doing what you love and it feels really satisfying and you're exerting all of your energy every single day in a really, really delightful way, and you're getting those full body yeses and you're following those and the people in your life celebrate you and they're so glad for the electricity that you bring into their lives, like that is where you're going to have that perpetual like self-generating, self-sustaining momentum of like just pure joy. And you're here for pure joy. Like you're not here to necessarily follow pleasure. It's easy to misconstrue that. I've been studying a lot about pleasure and pain and the brain and happiness and 
all of this. I read the book Dopamine Nation several weeks ago, and then I'm currently reading The Subtle Art of Not Giving a F-U-C-K, which shockingly um, is very good. I wouldn't have picked it up um, if it wasn't highly recommended by a friend, but I'm really loving his stuff that he's putting out there about it. But um, you, um, there is this idea that if, you're, if you pursue pleasure, if that's your goal, um, pain and pleasure are two sides of the same stick. And so if you pick up the pleasure side of the stick, you always get the pain. And if you pick up the pain, like you do the harder things, you take care of your chores, you do the exercise, you take your vitamins, you eat the healthy food. Like if you do the uncomfortable things, you always get the pleasure. But whichever one you pick up, you always get the other one. And the other one, whichever is the one you didn't intentionally pick up, you will get it and you will get it over and over and over again. It will last. So if you're going after pleasure, like let's say your pleasure is like a cocaine fix, ask any cocaine addict how their pleasure seeking went for them and like they had pain over and over and over again. We all know that like being addicted to drugs and seeking that pleasure will ruin your life. But it's that way with basically every kind of addiction. And depending on the severity of the addiction will depend on the level of pain that you have. But when you go after like the simple daily routine uncomfortable things your brain actually gives you pleasure because pleasure is a result and it comes in dividends over and over and over again and so when you can create that sustainability to it um it just will self-generate um jennifer says how does joy fit into this so joy is like where you get that full body yes and where you're just lit up and it just like, oh, it's undeniable. Like you'll be joyful. Everybody around you will be joyful. And then you will generate more things to be joyful about and in and through and with. And you'll receive more amazing things to respond to. And the more you fine tune that really awesome subtlety of strategy and authority of waiting to listen to your, like waiting to respond. Um, and if you're a manifesting generator, waiting to respond and then inform and not getting those backwards. Um, and then listening to your authority, whether it's the sacral or the emotional, once you get that fine tuned tweaking, like you'll start to get it where you're like, if your life is really messed up right now and you start doing this, it'll improve dramatically. But then you get to the fine tuning where you learn really, really clearly what is right for you. If you can dial that in, it's, it's not that you'll never experience pain again. It's just the problems that generate in your life will become the ones that you want because we all have problems. And I, I'm loving that from this book I'm currently listening to. It's like the rich people have problems because they are rich and the poor people have problems because they are poor. People with lots of children have problems because they have lots of children. People with no children have problems because they have no children. Now in each of these scenarios, <laughs> some of these problems could actually be kind of enjoyable. Like I love being an entrepreneur. I love running my own business. This is a, it comes with problems. Like right now I am figuring out how to hook up a new checkout system for my systems of what I'm doing. And that's a problem. Like it's something to be solved, but I deeply love it. Like I love the intricacies and the Rubik's cubing of it. Like this is a problem that I really, really love where somebody who doesn't really want to be an entrepreneur would be like, this is awful. Kill me now. <laughs> and it would be like the worst thing ever, like on their to-do list. They'd be like, I don't ever want to do that where I'm like, Oh, I just have to do these other things and then I can figure this out. And like, that's a problem, but it doesn't feel like a problem to me because I've been able to fine tune and tweak my life where the problems are like the true problems that are uncomfortable are very infrequent, but it's not like my life is problem free as far as like easy, smooth sailing, no struggle, but struggle is very different than like searing pain and suffering. So um, we are not going to get into variables today, um, Jennifer, sorry, it's that is very, very much more in depth. So, but I did see, Anna asked a question earlier on, my husband is a manifesting generator and he doesn't seem like one at all. I'm seeing it more in certain ways. I feel like it describes me more than him. I'm a generator and lately I feel frustrated the majority of the time. So yes, frustration definitely comes from not living your strategy and authority. And what's so interesting is when we have a spouse, so, so often it's easy to really clearly see their stuff and have it be a little bit harder to see ours. Like every, every single one of us does this. Um, and so there's also the idea of conditioning. Every single one of us has received some measure of conditioning with our design. And um, 
it's very possible he's trying to live not as a manifesting generator. He's trying to be something that he's not. And some of us kind of pull that off a little bit better, but there'll be signs like we'll be unhappy and we'll be showing our not self theme. Like the manifesting generator will be frustrated and angry. <laughs> and also as his wife, there's a really good chance that you are feeling frustrated um, as a reflection. Like if I'm dealing with a generator that's very difficult and is very frustrated themselves, I will feel frustration even though I'm not a generator. Um, obviously everybody has the ability to feel frustration, but I will experience frustration when dealing with a generator. And conversely, if I'm helping a generator to feel really satisfied with their life and I'm helping to like harness their awesome energy so that they can create the glorious life that they want, I feel very satisfied by that. It's a very satisfying experience, even though my signature is success. And ultimately, I feel very successful when I see generators and manifesting generators using their power in a really efficient and joyful way because I can't do that. <laughs> I don't have the ability to just go, go, go like they do. So it like, it creates where I feel so much success in helping them to just use all of their magnificent energy. Um, yes. Jennifer says full body. Yes. Leah says, Oh man, I'm a manifesting generator with an emotional authority. That's such a difficult things for me to wait through. Yes. However, the wait is difficult. I do recognize that. However, it will be so worth it. And once you really lean into it and you really, really, really get it and you like learn to wait, you'll be like, how did I ever skip this? Like, it's so much better. It's like forcing yourself to like book a trip that ends up being three times as much as you needed to spend to go to um, Mexico when you could be in Tahiti for like a fraction of the cost. And then you run into like an old friend or you meet somebody new there that's just so delightful and wonderful. Like, the, the universe is guiding you and has a specific plan for you. And you can keep torpedoing that if you want to, because that's what it looks like from where I'm standing, because I see it all. And it's like, oh, you shoving this thing through and being impatient is literally knocking out like you're this close to this glorious, amazing path that you don't even see. Like it's right, right there. And all you have to do is just wait for that right thing to respond to. And by weight, I mean, it literally could be five seconds. The magnetism of a generator living true to themselves is so incredible. So when you're like, oh, I think this would be really yummy and this would totally light me up, you just kick that up to God and his angels and the universe and just say, I am so excited and so grateful that this is already on its way. And then you just go do whatever you want. And often it's like, as soon as you walk out the door to like, go just be excited that it's on its way, like a limo could pull up in front of you and be like, hey, do you want to get in and go to Tahiti? Like it, I just don't put any limits on the universe, but like, that's the level of like, when you're at home, like crunched over your computer and like pissed off and like refusing to wait, you could be missing what the universe has prepared for you that is so, so, so glorious. Let's see. My scrolling is, uh, Joe says my manifesting generator hubby is one of the most joyful people that I know. Yeah, he must be living true to himself, which is so beautiful. Um, no, we're not doing the variables. Okay, does anybody else have any other questions? I'm giving you something to respond to. So if you're getting an uh-huh, go ahead and type out those questions um, in here. And let me think if there was anything else. I didn't like write down notes or anything like that. Um, let me just think if there was anything else that I wanted to be sure to tell all of you fabulous generators and manifesting generators because like what you got going on is amazing um and we need you to just be in joy please 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 do not allow yourselves to become slaves and become like harnessed by the heaviness of the world um you can move mountains uh and it won't feel like work if you're responding to the things that are in your life. Tammy says, how does the manifesting part show up for an MG? So it's that as soon as you respond correctly, so you have to, have to, have to as an MG, wait to respond, which is the hardest part for a manifesting generator. It's hard enough for a generator, but a manifesting generator is like, I have the ability to manifest. I can speak with my awesome throat center and make things happen. And so you know that inherently that you have this ability to manifest. We can all manifest, even if we don't have a motor to the throat, but you have that power to be able to do that, but you have to wait to respond. And then after you know what's right for you to respond to, then you inform with your voice 
everybody that will be impacted by this thing and then you go do the thing. Let's see. Jennifer says, how much impact do transits have with my authority? So transits will create like different channels and activations or emphasize channels that you already have, like um, gates that you already have. And so it could um, light things up, but your authority is always your authority. You might like say you're a sacral authority and then transits kind of connect you to your emotional center. You'll probably feel more emotional during that transit. But, um, and if this is too advanced for you, just don't listen to this part for people that are like, I don't understand what you're saying, but, um, you'll feel more emotional, but your authority is still always, always your authority. Um, Kelsey says new here, where should I look to learn about projectors? So there is another video that I did a little while ago. If you, um, go into the guides and then go into the live videos, you can scroll down there. I try to add all of my live videos to that guide. Um, and you can see, or you can just search my full name in the group and the word projector or the uninvited projector is the name of the video. So search for that. And I did a similar video all about projectors. And I've also done one about the unregarded manifester. And we just haven't done one yet about reflectors. Um, Cindy says, I missed the first part. Do generators love handle having their own business? Could, could, yes, could, no. Um, being an entrepreneur is never isolated to just one aura type. All different aura types run their businesses and all different aura types make excellent employees and all different aura types are running their own business and probably don't want to be and all different aura types are being an employee and want to be running their own businesses. So it's it comes down to are you following your strategy and authority? Because if you're listening to what's true for you, um, if you're follow if you're following your strategy, you're doing it the correct way for you and then you're listening to your authority to figure out what's true for you. Um, that's how you will be an excellent employee, an excellent business owner, or an excellent whatever it is that you do with your life. It applies to everything. Leah says, thank you for that, that Naomi. I do keep receiving the same message about going with the flow and just waiting for something to respond to. So I'm feeling more supported and less in fear in that area now. Yes, there is an excellent story in the book, Understanding Human Design, which the book is right over there, but I won't grab it. Um, I'll preface it. Um, summarize it for you guys. So I love this and it applies to manifesting generators as well, but really applies to generators. But if you're a Manny Gen, see how true this feels for you. So there was a woman that wanted to cross a stream and she was pretty clear on where she wanted to get to on the other side of the stream, um, but she had no idea how to get there. The river was very fast. There was no bridge in sight. There was no um, anything to take her across. There was no boat. There was no way to get there but she really wanted it. And so as she's pacing up and down the shore, she's starting to get frustrated. And then this voice tells her, hey, look down in the water. And she looks down in the water and boop, there is a stone that has appeared in the river. And she was like, oh, okay. And so she steps down onto the stone and she's like, okay, yeah, this is great. But now I'm in the river, but where am I gonna go? And she starts getting frustrated and even jumping up and down on the, st on the stone. And then this little voice says, look down again. And just a little ways off, there's another stone that just appeared. And so she's like, oh, okay. So she steps over to that one and she's a little bit bemused by the process. And she, um, then she's like, okay, let's see how this goes. And then another one appears and another one appears and another one appears. And she's like, okay, it's going to work out. It's all going to be fine. It always shows up until she gets to the other side. And she's learned that everything that she needs will appear when it's meant to. And the little voice inside of her was not what told her to take the next step. The external thing was the stone appearing. And so, and you might even get halfway across the river and realize, oh, just kidding. I actually want to be back there. And you just follow your authority of listening to what's right for you. Cindy says, what does sacral authority mean? So sacral authority means you have a defined sacral center and you do not have a defined emotional solar plexus center. So if you have a sacral and an emotional solar plexus definition, you are an emotional authority generator or manifesting generator. But if you have a defined sacral, but your little triangle over on the, the right-hand side of the chart is white, that means that you are a sacral authority. So that means that the authority of how you know it's right for you is you will get this clear uh-huh or uh-uh 
coming from your sacral. It'll feel like a gut reaction, a gut response, listening to your body. You'll feel it low in your body. It could be very much like a uh-huh or a uh-uh. And I was that mother <laughs> that worked that out of my kids. And I like that Karen Curry Parker mentions that in her book. And I promptly apologized to my boys when I read this. She was like, even well-meaning parents will tell sacral authority children say yes or no and I totally did that because I have a Virgo moon and I was like this is how it's done this is proper and um I didn't want to have men that I raised that were like uh-huh like to me that seemed so um whatever judgment I had about it I can't even connect to what that judgment was now and I apologize I sat down with them and I was like I have taught you this thing and I want you to undo it like I'm so sorry I want you to listen to this part of you it's important and it's magnificent and you need to listen to that uh-huh uh-uh and it's not uncommon for adult generators and manifesting generators to be cut off from that part of their authority and to only hear a yes or a no or to hear what they think is what they're supposed to do instead of really listening for that uh-huh uh-uh the best way to figure out what you want as a generator or a manifesting generator if you're like i don't even know what i want have someone who loves you ask you a bunch of yes or no questions or either or questions because it needs to be external so if you're like should i start a business like are you going to get an uh-huh or uh-uh to that? That's a, that's a lot of questions. So you need to disseminate it down. So someone who loves you, but also somebody who can figure out how to like get around all of these things and ask you the questions that are going to tease out what your authority is saying to you because you can respond to all of these yes or no questions or black or white or this or that type of questions. It's very either or, and that will help to narrow it down. So, and then you just listen to your authority, whether it's the sacral authority of the uh-huh, uh-uh, or you listen to your emotions and you feel it out. Emotional people are feelers. If somebody has an undefined emotional center, they're probably not going to be like, how does that feel? <laughs> they're going to they're feel stuff. They're still emotional people because they're humans, but they're going to get more of an immediate um, response. Um, fun fact, I have tons of non-emotional generators in my space for some reason. Almost all the close people in my life, like I have like three or four people that are close in my life that are not this, but it just cracks me up. I just absolutely love like the way that my juicy emotional projector self interacts with these non-emotional generators and they seem to love me so it works out really well obviously I don't limit my circle but it was just noticeable as I started running charts I was like huh the company that I keep is very highly like disproportionately so these non-emotional generators and you know that's my husband and um, some of my closest friends and all of that so um, either or questions, great idea. Yes, Jennifer. And Joe says, oh, wow, this is helpful for me with my husband. Thank you. You're so welcome. And yes, if you are not the generator or manifesting generator, but you have them in your home or in your life, this can shed a whole bunch of light <laughs> and also help you to explain yourself to them, like show this to them. And also, if you are the other aura types that I've done the videos for, maybe look those up and show them about your aura type if you're trying to explain yourself to them in a way that they're like, oh, well, she totally described me here, so she must actually be describing you here in this other one. Because sometimes it can be like, no, that can't be right. For the ones that aren't us, we're like, no, that people don't experience things that way because we don't experience things that way, but it's so true. So... Um, thank you guys so much. I have some on-demand courses. I don't have any yet on human design, actually. But if you want to go deeper in your astrology, I've got the big three, which is a totally free webinar. And um, I've got astrology for real connection, which takes you deeper into astrology. And it is on my to-do list to do a basic human design course so that you can do that um, for online learning. And um, good, Joe. I'm glad you guys will watch this together. And uh, I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day. Love you.